converted. Fade in, cold over. Interior, voyage into masculine. Giant meeting room, morning, flashback. In a very large meeting room, a group of 20 men of various ages all sit on the ground in a circle. They are dressed similarly. All of them are wearing name tags and a necklace with a pouch on it. Some of the shirts have a logo for Voyage into Masculine, Vim. At the center of the circle of men sits a handsome, hopeful Andy, 15. Think Brian McCook, a.k.a. Katya from RuPaul's Drag Race. Andy is thin and tall, with a toothy smile and bright eyes. He's being very tightly embraced by Dr. Nicholas Tomasini, 46. Tomasini's skin is shiny and tan, and his hair looks like Kenny Rogers got his hands on a box of Just For Men. This is why you have same-sex attractions. It's not your fault, Andrew. Your father never held you like this. When I hold you like this, you're getting now what you so badly needed back then. I know this is your first day here. But I also know you can beat this. Andy is trying his very best. God wants me to love a woman. The men outside the circle clap for their brother. This isn't about God. On the wall, just behind them, hangs a giant cross. You don't want to be gay. Other men clap again. None of them want to be gay. Right, that's what my mother told me. You always do what your overbearing, shrieking, horrible mother says? Wait, I love my mother. Your mother is a she-devil, and your father is a Ken doll. Great hair, but dickless. That's why you're attracted to men. The other men clap, and he is genuinely concerned. What if I just like men, just like, naturally? A man from the outside of the circle agrees enthusiastically with this question. Yeah! A mix of concern and piqued interest washes over the men. Nobody likes the same sex naturally. He slips back into his manliness. Right. Dr. Tomasini squeezes Andy tighter. Ah, uh, I want to be attracted to a woman. Dr. Tomasini squeezes even tighter. Naturally. The men clap and cheer, having just witnessed a breakthrough. What? What is that? Take <laughs> my erection. The phone rings. Interior, Andy's <clears throat> apartment, night, present day. A now 28-year-old Andy wakes up in bed, relieved this was only a flashback. He flips on the light, and his room is magical. A giant exposed closet holds gowns, costumes, heels, and boots, all lined up neatly and organized by color. There are wigs everywhere. He grabs for his phone and answers. It's his younger brother, Danny, 20, a kind of dopey, cute young man with eternally sleepy eyes. Or is he just high? It's a toss-up. Danny, it's the middle of the night. He looks at his clock. It's 1.30 p.m. Oh, damn, I suck. End of cold open. Act 1. Interior, wicked bad costume shop day. Andy and his best friend, Devin, 34, who looks like Ellen Page, only taller and curvier. Devin is the kindest soft butch you could ever meet. They sort through costumes, occasionally holding some up to themselves. Andy looks tired. Yes, another nightmare. That's fun for me. Oh, it's like an episode of Scooby-Doo in your head. Because? Oh, it's like a mystery that's haunting you without Velma to make it erotic. Do you mean Daphne? Daphne never. Velma? Always. Well, the male options for me are Shaggy, Fred, or Scooby, so I'll pass. The girls in glasses and turtlenecks is my home. It feels like... Can we maybe go on forever? Is there a breakup math for this? You mean like five years recovering for every one year in conversion therapy? When I broke up with David, everyone was like, you were together for three years, it'll take six months to get over it. Was that right? It took me into... I'm still getting over David. Oh good, so it's an exact science. How long were you in therapy? Every weekend for six years during Voyage into Masculine, plus the summer retreats, plus my one-on-ones with Dr. Tomasini once a week, so I should be over it. She tries to let him down gently. Any minute now. I'm so glad my parents just sent me to a regular therapist. All she did was play games with me and tell me I was normal. Damn, I lucked out because you? I think it's getting better. I don't always have nightmares. Sometimes they're night terrors. Yeah. Interior, Mother's Evening. Andy and Danny are sitting across from each other at Mother's, a campy queer restaurant with a drag performance space downstairs. It's Andy's second home. They're eating a slice of pizza. It's quiet. Danny reaches for another piece, not because he's hungry, mostly to delay things. Danny, we've been sitting here for like 40 minutes. You told me this morning. It was almost 2 p.m. 
I'm not in college. I don't have morning classes, okay? We lead different lives. Please tell me before I pass away. Okay. Look. Dad knows. Dad knows what? And he knows what because how? He knows you're in Boston. He knows you're a drag queen. He knows you're performing here tonight because he checked my phone. Why don't you use the fingerprint lock thing? I do. He used my finger to unlock it while I was passed out. I think he drugged me. You drugged you. It's I think you have a problem. It's not a problem. It is for me. I think he might be coming <clears throat> here. Like, soon. And he has no poker face right now. His eyes are huge. Good! That is good news! It's not good. Flashback, too. Interior, the McCloskey's living room, night. Andy, 14, is sitting in the corner of a giant leather sectional couch. His parents sit on either end. You go to Dr. Tomasini, or you don't live here anymore. And that's the bottom line. You are not gay here. Don. You can't be gay here. Oh, what does that mean, here? This is not a gay place. It's not Minneapolis. Is that even... At a gay city? Where is Prince from? That Prince is not gay. You wish. Why is this happening? I found your journal, and I showed your father. I didn't know what else to do. And he is horrified. He's crying now. Mom, that's private. What boy keeps a journal? That should be tipped us off immediately. You cannot be gay. You cannot do this to me. I'm a Eucharistic minister. What will everyone say? It's not about you, Dad. He tries to calm himself down. Mary is conflicted now. But Don, we should talk about this. Just, just you and I. We don't need to talk about anything. You live under my roof, you follow my rules. Don't you want a wife, kids? Look, it's okay to have friends, but you can't seduce them. No, oh, he's 14, Don. He's not seducing anyone. Then why did he go out for wrestling? Cut back. Interior, Mother's Evening. Danny looks nervously at Andy. You think he'll be cool? Interior, Mother's Dressing Room, Night. Andy is contouring his face in front of a mirror. He looks insane, but you know, drag has a process. In walks Marcus, 28, a straight-up gorgeous African-American man, a dancer and singer and a true artist. He's prepping today, but tomorrow he could easily dress like Stevie Nicks. He's crush-worthy out of drag and stunning in drag. Marcus sits down beside Andy in front of a lighted vanity. Maybe you should take the night off. If I take the night off, they win. Your dad is a terrorist. Absolutely. Where was he radicalized? St. Pascal's Catholic Church in Dorchester. I can't believe this shit happens in Massachusetts. This is a liberal ass place. In Massachusetts, you can be gay. He slips into his Dorchester accent and butches up. In Dorchester? Bro, you wicked freaking queer. No. Marcus man. pops open his fan and has a visceral reaction to this masculinity. <laughs> no, man. You. Get him out of here. Oh, now I have to sage back here. And don't do the show. And he considers it for one second, then steals himself. No, I have to do this. I need the money. But also, why does he get the satisfaction of stopping me? Hell no. It's because of him I missed out on everything gay until I was 20. I have to do it. Marcus speaks truthfully, but very playfully to Andy. He even gets some small laughs, though everyone is very nervous. It's very clear they're sisters. Then just ignore him. You're gifted at that, bitch. I've seen your ass be very cold. One, how dare you? Two, could you do that? For once, this isn't about me. Bitch, could you, bitch? Bitch, no, I could not. Then you need to shut up with it. Okay, good note. Thank you, shut up. <laughs> Interior, the main stage of Mother's later. The stage and house are dark and music is playing. Andy is now in his drag persona, Crystal Pepsi. A stunning comedy queen dripping with stage presence. Think Katya. She waits backstage for her entrance. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for your headliner. Women want to be her. Men want to be inside her. Please welcome to the main stage, Crystal Pepsi. The house is packed with an eager audience. Sound bites from 80s and 90s TV and music all edited together play in the pitch black. Until finally, When You Were Mine by Cindy Lauper starts playing. Crystal starts her show. She doesn't miss an opportunity to be funny, and her lip sync is perfection. She is a star. In between lyrics, she gently takes the cash that people are holding up and for her. Each person is getting a little moment of connection. A beautiful baby gay, 19, hands her a five. 
You're beautiful! Ha! She whispers back. I know. The audience loves her, but now she can feel it. He's here. Crystal keeps performing. She struggles to stay in character, and her eyes dart around the room, landing finally on a man in the corner with his arms crossed. Immediately, she begins to cry. The audience is amazed. The harder she cries, the more money she makes. She's barely making words with her lips now, but what a show. Finally, the music ends. Her face is black with mascara. She stands right in front of her father. The audience is applauding. Baby Gay is losing his mind. <coughs> Andrew. Hi, Dad. End of Act One. Act Two. Interior dressing room, moments later. Don stands in a state of disbelief across from Crystal. He is taking it all in. Crystal towers over him. They stare at each other. There's animosity in Andy's voice that even he doesn't recognize. I don't know what to do with you. Neither does my manager. You choose this over family? I still talk to Danny. You're coming home right now and we're going to talk about this. No, I'm not. Why would I want to? You've been 20 minutes away this whole time. It's not my fault you never leave Dorchester. We could have been brunching for years. Andy. Look, I have another song to do, and I have to change my dress. You have a penis. Relax, I'm tucked. That's supposed to make me relax? You'd be surprised how good I feel without a dick in the way. Enough about your penis. I was talking about you. Marcus enters, wearing only fishnets. His face is made up, but he has no wig on. Don is startled. So is Marcus. Oh, there's Dad in there. Hello. I'm Marcus. I'm so uncomfortable because I know all about you. Don was just leaving. Well... That is a shame. No, I think we're all fine with it. You're a mean dad. This was horrible. Don walks out of the dressing room. Marcus hugs Andy for a long time. We're not having sex. Marcus breaks the hug. <laughs> Bitch, I wasn't even thinking that, but now that I am, I'm disappointed. Interior, wicked bad costume shop afternoon. Andy is doing Devin's makeup at the counter. The place is dead. Thank you for this. I've always wanted to be boy dragged. Do you have a king name picked out? No, but isn't Gorge W. Bush too on the news? Only you can see your path. You can't see till it's done though, because it looks insane till it's good. Okay, because some of these colors you're using? Contouring the male face is very different. A customer enters the shop. Neither Andy nor Devin look up. Hi there, let us know if we can help you with anything. Um, I think you can help me with something. Andy looks up. Mom? Hi. Devin turns toward Mary and really startles her. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Devin looks in the mirror. She is a terrifying clown. She's laughing, but kind of pissed. You asshole. This isn't boy drag. Oh, you said boy drag. I thought you said John Wayne Gacy, clown murderer. Devin punches him in the arm. You're very talented, Andy. Andy doesn't move. He doesn't know how to proceed. How'd you know where to find me? Danny. I'm going to kill him. No, please don't be mad at him. If you came here to tell me to stop being who I am, I can't help you, Mom. No, that's not why I came here. Devin gets protective. She is still a terrifying clown. Okay, I'll bite. Why did you come here? Mary tries not to be startled, but she can't help it. That makeup is scary. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I made a lot of wrong choices. I let you down. I hurt you. I let your father hurt you. I miss you every day. I wanted to tell you that for a long time. What the? You put him through hell. I didn't put my foot down. I didn't stand up for my son, and I let his father. And that's stopping now. Danny told me that I shouldn't be anyone's bitch. And I don't like that kind of talk, but he's right. I am nobody's bitch anymore. Holy shit. I don't even know what I'm feeling right now. Andy tilts the mirror so Devin catches her reflection. She's caught off guard and gasps. That's how I feel right now. Mary walks around the corner to hug Andy. She squeezes him so tightly. I love you. And I'm sorry I was your father's little bitch for so long. Danny said I, I need to boss up. Okay, Danny. Danny's pretty smart, I guess. Oh, he loves you so much, and so do I, and so does your dad. Two out of three. No, he does. He just needs to have his eyes opened, pride open, like like a clockwork orange. Uh, I'm beginning to see that he's the little bitch. In fact, I told him as much. I've never heard your mom say little bitch so many times. This is thrilling. 
Mom, I don't have the energy to pry open his church eyes. I'm a working woman. It's not your job. You focus on being Crystal Pepsi. Come through, Crystal. How did you learn any of this? Well, Danny has been showing me things on the internet since yesterday. We had so much fun together. Um, and also, I was at your show last night. What? I was in the back. I wore a mustache and a hat. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had so much fun. It was fun to be dressed as a man. I don't think you noticed me because you were crying so hard, but I gave you a $10 bill. That's a really nice tip. What made you change your mind? Mary is startled again, but answers honestly. She's full of guilt. One of my students came out to me, and I helped him through it. I wish I'd been able to do that for my own son. But I'm here now, and I'm so glad I got to see you up there. You were stunning. You're a star, Andy. You have my legs, and I wish I had your cheekbones. That's all contouring. You can have those, Mrs. McCloskey. Mary tries to look at Devin comfortably. Um, call me Mary. And, uh, honey, you still have clown makeup on. Yeah, I'm kind of here for it. Okay, well, Andy, I hope someday you'll forgive me. I miss you, and I love you. We'll work on it, okay? Well, that is just lit. <laughs> That's all I can ask for. Lit. Daddy teach you that? Uh-huh. Interior, Andy's apartment day. Andy is pinning fabrics together on a dress form, preparing for a cartoon-themed performance of Mother's. His character will be She-Ra, and the costume looks impeccable. Andy is truly a very talented designer. He's hard at work with the TV on in the background until something catches him off guard, a voice that's hauntingly familiar. The TV shows the older, even tanner face of Dr. Tomasini. We see clips of him addressing large groups of people in various churches, in conference rooms, with bad graphics and editing. Your same-sex attraction does not define you. If you feel that you were destined to be gay, we can help you. And he stares, speechless at the commercial. He grabs his phone and starts recording the screen. Join us at Hilton Boston Back Bay in the Belvedere Ballroom, Saturday, March 24th. Call 1-800-GAY-AWAY. That's 1-800-429-2929. There's always another option. And he grabs his phone and sends a text to Marcus and Devin. It just says SOS. He immediately sends another that says 911. And he sits for about 30 seconds, just staring straight ahead. A second later, there's a knock at the door. Devin and Marcus are there. Marcus is soaked, wearing a towel. Devin does not have any pants on. Bitch, what? This fool just grabbed me out of the shower. Yes, we were all doing things okay. I was in the middle of writing. Besides, you had already been in there for, what, like 20 minutes? You're fine. I have a regimen. She turns to Andy. Honestly, though, what's going on? I was finally writing. He's coming here. Your dad? No, the devil himself. Dr. Oz. Bitch! She, he shows me the video. I could feel it was a doctor. Good God, he is Leatherface. You're safe. He doesn't know how to get to you. I know, but he's coming to my city. This isn't tucked away like some gay outward bound. Except they're all in the closet. It's inward bound. That's a web series at the very least. I'ma write that down. He's coming to Back Bay on purpose. I bet he plants his shiny face in neighborhoods all over the country. Ugh. Bearded piece of shit. Well, there's only one thing to do. Seduce him and take it. <laughs> okay, there's only two things to do. What's the other one? Protest. No way. If we protest, it'll only draw more attention to him. The last thing I want is him crying about religious freedom and then news crews show up. News crews is definitely a web series. Are you writing a web series? I can't help that I'm always generating it. Your girl's a content creator. I think I might have something for us to create. Interior, Dr. Tomasini's office, morning, flashback. Andy, 19, is undergoing some one-on-one -on -one therapy. He sits in an uncomfortable chair with Dr. Tomasini directly across from him. Dr. Tomasini sits in a much higher, lavish-looking leather chair. He has the upper hand here. Andy is nervous, sweating. Dr. Tomasini is speaking in a much darker tone. Imagine the woman you want to be with. What qualities does she have? You like to draw, Andrew. Draw her. What does she look like? And he starts sketching. It's easy for him. He's very talented. 
She's got long legs. She's tall. She's wearing high heels. Dr. Tomasini is acting now. She sounds very sexy. Andy is acting too. She is. She's hot. She's got huge um, struggles a bit. Fronts. Chest fronts. What? I don't want to be disrespectful. It's just us guys in here, Andy. Say the hottest word you can think of. Ding dongs. Dinglings? Men don't call women's breasts dinglings or ding dongs. But some do. They don't. I'm a gentleman. What does her face look like? It's very attractive and feminine. Use more specifics. Remember, this is your perfect girl. Of course it is. What else would it be? What do you mean by that? I I'm sorry. The whole time we're talking about my perfect woman, and I'm thinking... Baseball player with a soccer player's legs and a beach volley player's abs. She sounds perfect for you. I didn't say softball player, but if you open this up to both sexes, you get some softball players in here. I said baseball player. Andy, you have to fight this urge. That's all it is. How can an urge last a decade? Urges can last for much longer. Some of the men at Vim have had their same-sex attractions for their whole lives. It's not an urge, it's who they are. Andrew, nobody's forcing you to stay here. We're in the middle of the woods. It's relaxing. A shuttle picked us up and drove us here. It's walkable, though. It was a five-hour drive! That's like 300 miles! You gotta want it. Oh, we're free to go? Why do people guard the doors to our cabins? That's for your safety. To protect you from bears, twinks, otters, all of them. They want you to be gay and sexually promiscuous. And they will stop at nothing. Look, Andy, if you want to go so badly, I'll just call your father and tell him you're quitting. Andy loses his gumption. No, please don't. I'm not quitting. Then draw. Interior, Mother's Evening, present day. Andy, Danny, and Mary are eating dinner together. This hasn't happened in years. Mary and Andy are nervous. Danny is pretty okay about it. The food here is, is good. Yeah, it's not bad. And we eat free if we have a show. Kind of a shift meal. That's nice of them. Well, it's also kind of necessary. We're all poor and drag ain't cheap. I thought maybe next weekend I'd make you some lasagna. Is it still your favorite? Are you going to make it with sausage? Would you rather I don't? Yeah, I don't like sausage. Interesting. I heard you steady gobble sausage. Danny! Oh, what? Well, he's allowed. Why? Because I know he loves me. And he's not saying it like an insult. Intent matters. The door to the restaurant opens and David walks in. He looks like a gay Asian Clark Kent. He sees Andy and stops dead in his tracks. It's been a while. He starts walking over to say hi to a very nervous Andy who looks dumbstruck. Oh no, oh god, oh no. Why are you here? Hi. Uh, Andy stares at him in pleasant disbelief. Why does it feel so nice to see him? After a moment, he speaks softly, almost like he's swallowing his words. Hello. David? It's been a while, I guess. Three years? Danny suddenly realizes that this is David. The David. Hey, man, what the hell are you doing here? Do I... Do I know you? I'm his brother, you piece of shit. Whoa. I'm so sorry. He's high. He's got a drug problem. It's not a problem. It is for me. Are you high right now, Daniel? Mom. Yes. Uh, it's not a problem. This guy broke Andy's heart. Maybe we don't have to. Like, maybe we just don't have to do this. Because, like, in my mind, we shouldn't do this. Nah, no, let's do it. He needed you, man. He needed someone to love him, cause I couldn't get to him, and my parents were being bitches. I wasn't in a good place with myself. He waited as long as he could. You waited as long as you could. Wait, you're talking to your mom now? For how long? Three days. You're rebuilding. You hurt my son. Not as bad as you did. <laughs> and he stress laughs. He can't believe this. We have no real way to measure that. I wasn't being the best mother. Uh, maybe I'm a horrible mother since my youngest is high all the time. 
Hmm. Not all the time. Only when it really counts. David, it would be nice to talk. Also, why are you here? Yeah, why are you here? Shouldn't you be more mellow from the weed? It's an aggressive strain. All right, bud. I saw a commercial for that asshole doctor your asshole father sent you to. He's gonna be back in Back Bay. I'm sorry. I know this is weird, but I felt like somebody had to, I don't know, warn you. Dr. Tomasini is coming here? Yeah, he sure is. He's coming to recruit gays, but not in a good hearty milk kind of way. <laughs> we know. Bye, bitch. Can we bring it down? Yeah, sorry. He really loved you. And you really messed him up. This is news to David. That's probably enough of that, Dan. What do we do? Bitch, who is we? End of Act 2. Act 3. Interior, the Belvedere Ballroom, Hilton, Boston, afternoon. Danny and David watch from the audience as Dr. Tomasini spews his bullshit from the stage. He's wearing a very, very dumb headset. Confused men, scared parents, and a few stragglers of various ages and sizes are scattered throughout the large crowd. The sound is horrible. Maybe that's because the microphone is so close to his mouth. Man, that headset is dumb. <laughs> you don't have to accept being gay if you don't want to. All you have to do is want to change. There is nothing that says you have to be gay if you don't choose to be gay. It's all up to you. Same-sex attraction is preventable, even curable. The audience applauds. Danny turns to David. Damn. All right. I gotta find a sound booth. It's literally right behind you. It's not even hidden. This is a hotel ballroom. <laughs> How much weed do you smoke? Dude, honestly, I hate that you're my partner. Danny walks to the sound booth, where a very sad sound tech, Tony, is sitting. They look like they hate their job. Yo. Yo. You okay? No. I hate this. This guy's a huge dipshit. I know. I didn't want to work this event, but my manager threatened to fire me. I'm sorry. If it's any consolation, he sounds horrible. I did that. I had told him to put that mic as close to his mouth as possible, and I kept muting it intermediately. But I'm gay. As hell. I have to sit through this bullshit. This is harmful. Yeah. It is. I'm gonna stop it. Okay? I can't get fired. We'll figure out something out, okay? I promise. Will you let me stop it? Yeah. Yeah, I will. Okay, cool. I don't have to work any of this shit. So, can you help me stop this? Tell me what you need. Danny gives David a <coughs> thumbs up. David raises his hand. Dr. Tomasini sees it and tries to shake him off. David's hand stays in the air. We'll have some time for questions at the end. David's hand is still in the air. Then he stands up. I have reserved a portion of the time at the end, so if you would just sit tight. David starts to wave excitedly, like Hermione Dan Granger. He wants to be called up. OK, OK, fine. I guess I can take your question now. OK. This is a multi-parter. You know, we can just wait until the end. No, that won't do. All right. OK, firstly, why? Why what? As in, why is he doing this to people? Lord. Excuse me? Well, you are not excused. Why? Why do this to people? Why? I don't do Hey, that. shut up. I guess also I want to know what's wrong with you. How could you? And when will this be over? I can help you. I don't need your help. I need you to sit your gay ass down. I'm not gay. Right. None of us are. We just haven't met the right woman. Tony pulls the lights. The whole ballroom goes completely dark. The song Heavy Cross by Gossip starts playing. Crystal Pepsi is standing downstage center in a spotlight dressed as She-Ra. She walks off stage and begins to work the crowd. Dr. Tomasini runs to stop it, but Pariah Carey, Marcus's <laughs> drag persona, walks in front of him and begins lip-syncing right in his face. It is a party and a show all in one. Dr. Tomasini is surrounded and very uncomfortable. The men in the audience don't know how to react. The queens perform the song all the way through. Devin and boy drag, yet to be named, and Pariah start tossing flyers into the air. They get applause. Some people stand up. Crystal puts her arm around Dr. Tomasini. 
She gets her mouth so close to his and begins to speak into his microphone. Hello everyone, my name is Crystal Pepsi. I'm one of the performers at Mother's. Actually, to clarify, I'm the star of the show. Bitch, right now. Crystal pulls off her wig. <clears throat> Dr. Tomasini takes off his dumb headset and Andy grabs it. Bitch, always. My real name is Andy and I went to Voyage into Masculine for six years. And I had one-on-ones with Lucifer here every week. Are you a little khaki you St. John's Bay? J.C. Penny's bitch. This hate shit made you rich and you dress nasty. You look like a roasty street chicken, greasy with crispy skin. Oh my god, yes you do! <laughs> Somebody should sell you for seven dollars at Costco. Oh Andy, what happened to you? We made so much progress. We didn't. You're a monster, okay? You guys, I know how you feel. I felt like I had to do this bullshit therapy. I was a good little soldier for a long time. I, cr I tried my hardest to not be me, and every time the real me crept back in, I dug in harder to them, because gay was wrong. My father told me so. He's probably here. Don, you here? Don stands up and walks quickly out of the room, embarrassed. There he goes. He lives for this hateful shit, but I don't. Listen, I don't have any answers. I still have nightmares from this dumpster. That's the tea. He looks at Dr. Tomasini directly. I believe you were the devil's actual anus. <laughs> yes, work he is. He addresses the whole audience again. Look, you don't have to sit through this. You don't have to be anything other than who you are. And who you are is just fine by me. And all these bitches, we are here. We are queer. You should get used to it. So, if you give one of these flyers to the box office lady tonight, your tickets are on me. Come celebrate with us, because you should be celebrated. And he speaks directly to Dr. Tomasini. And you know what, bitch? I hope you come too. And don't worry, after you watch me, I'll try to ignore your erection. And he walks out. Pariah stomps off like she's on the runway. Everyone leaves. Dr. Tomasini just stands there as his once captive audience now starts leaving. He makes one last measly attempt to sway them. You don't have to be gay. Why would you want to be gay? This isn't over, Andrew. We're going to talk about this in person. I'll find you. It's not that hard to find me. I stand out. Interior, mother's front bar, night. Andy waits at the front bar for a vodka soda. He sees three men tentatively walk in with flyers from before. Tony, in their new job, stands the men and stamps their hands. Yes! You boys are about to gay the house down! He reaches into a basket next to him and showers them in condoms. End of Act 3. Tag. Interior, Dr. Tomasini's office, morning, flashback. Andy is still sketching his dream woman, with Dr. Tomasini sitting across from him. Andy tunes out Dr. Tomasini's voice for a moment and starts sketching. For once, he isn't focused on what the doctor is saying, it's like he's alone. Dr. Tomasini just watches, in a sort of disbelief that Andy is taking to this drawing idea. Andy starts shading the picture in a little, and finally he stops. Well done. That was very well done. Yeah. All of a sudden, it became way more fun. Andy is proud of himself. This is the first time he's felt anything like this in a long, long time. Andy loves this woman. All right. You did it. What's her name? Crystal. Fade to black.